teach you how to snap toss the ball. That's the professional way to toss a basketball, to catch it, to make it spin. Now you see some people doing this where they just spin the ball and they try to spin it really fast and get it to work. And you can do that of course. That works. But it doesn't work as well as this. It's a snap toss. It's a pressurized release of the ball. Here's how you do the snap toss. First, without a basketball even, just take your hands like this and feel the pressure that you can get by doing that. Because that's what you're doing. You're snapping the basketball. So you're going to take the basketball, put your hands on one side, one on the other, and just snap your hands apart like that. Like you're spinning a top. And remember, if you've ever spun a top as a little kid, you don't just barely spin a top. You spin it as hard as you can because you're trying to make it go as fast as you can. So when you snap that ball, you've got to snap it hard, hard as you possibly can. Just do this, whap, and catch the ball. Don't even, just catch the ball. Don't try to catch it on the finger. Just snap it. Get good at getting that force, getting a good hard snap. Spin the ball. Okay, the next step in the process is being able to catch the ball on your finger. Now, I want you to remember back when you were in an egg toss or a water balloon toss. If you've ever seen, you can't catch a water balloon or an egg like this. You can't just let it hit the surface. You have to catch it and pull away. Catch it and pull away. It's exactly the same way for spinning a basketball. Once you get your snap toss, okay, you're going to be dropping it on your finger. But if you notice right there how I caught that ball, I let my hand come down. As the, as the ball hit my hand, my hand actually comes down. So once again, watch. Snap toss, hand comes down. The hand doesn't just stay there. It has to pull down to give a little bit for that ball. Now your most coordinated finger, at least for most folks, is your middle finger. Your middle and or your pointer finger, one of the two. So you need to pick one of those two fingers to try to balance the ball on. So snap toss. And I use my middle finger. Snap toss, middle finger. And notice how I keep pulling down. And when you first start off, obviously you're not going to be able to balance it that well. But just keep practicing, keep practicing. Catch it, meeting the ball and bringing it down slightly until you have it balanced. Okay, the final phase of ball spinning. This is the one secret that most folks just don't know. And that is, if you want it to be an extremely tight spin, if you want that perfect spin, you have to get it on your fingernails. Now don't tell me you don't have fingernails, because I don't either. I bite mine off as well. But <laughs> you, you have to get it on either the nub of one of those fingernails, or just something there. If there's even a fraction of an inch of a fingernail, put it on that. The fingernail, I'll put it on my thumbnail actually. The fingernail allows the ball to freely flow because there's no friction there. And it'll spin for a long time if you get a really tight spin and put it on your fingernail. So that's really the, the most important thing. You see a lot of people that can spin basketballs pretty well on the flesh of their fingers. But if they just put it to their fingernail, they're, al they're almost at the professional level now. So that's the big secret of spinning a basketball. Put it on your fingernail.
Okay, so you're pretty good at the snap toss, catching it, and it spins there for a while. You're doing pretty decent, but you want to keep that thing going. So you're going to have to smack it when it starts to slow down. Now notice how what I'm doing is I'm barely touching this ball. I'm barely grazing it. Barely. It sounds like I'm really smacking it hard, but I'm not. I'm just barely grazing the surface very quickly. Okay, to change fingers, it's very simple. You simply get the ball spinning very well. I usually start off on my thumb or my middle finger. Those are my most balanced fingers. And I go from the thumb very easily to the pointer finger. Remember to use your fingernail. And then the other fingers, you just basically put them up on the ball. There's no big secret. If someone thinks they're really good, tell them to go offhand pinky. Because offhand pinky is the type of trick in the book. <laughs> I'm going to show you some tricks uh, later on that people like better. But offhand pinky, toughest trick in the book. Okay, this is called the 360 degree spin. But what it is, is I basically have the ball spinning and then I take it around and up while it still spins, of course. And it's very simple when you learn the fingering position. Basically, this is kind of difficult to see on this camera angle, but you're going to start off with the ball spinning in front of you. And obviously, you, without a basketball, do this first. You have to be able to turn your hand in a way that your finger keeps pointing up. So I'm going to just show you how I do it. I bring it around here. Notice how my finger is still pointing up. Around here. And now here is a very pivotal moment. I have to come up with the ball. To keep my finger pointing up in the air. Up in the air. Now here is where I just, I twist my wrist around. Notice how my finger has never pointed in any direction other than straight up. I'll do it again. Hand like this. We're pretending of course the ball is on that finger. I suggest wearing short sleeves. There's my finger still pointing up. Still pointing up and I'm not flexible so don't worry about this being something you have to be flexible for. Still up. Now right here is the is the big trick. I turn my wrist, keeping my finger still up in the air. You need to play with that for a while before you even think about putting a basketball on. Okay, let's try it with the basketball on there now. My finger's still pointing up. Still up. Notice how I turn my wrist. The finger stays pointing up in the air. It just it just almost your wrist almost does everything. You're not doing this. You don't have to do it fast. You can do it slow as can be. You just need to make sure your finger always points straight up in the air. And I'm not flexible at all. Trust me. I'm not flexible at all. Okay, I'm going to teach you a trick called around the world. And if you play basketball, you've probably seen some guys out there doing this trick without a spinning basketball. That's a pretty cool trick in itself. But I've added the spinning basketball. Here's how it works. First, let's learn how to do the trick without the ball spinning. All you do is your arms are going to be in this position. Circular position for the ball to basically roll around on your arm and then your body and then your arm and your body and just keeps going in a circle. And what you have to do is, first of all, you have to let gravity help you out. Hold your arm up to start with and just let it roll down your arm. Just start with that. Just let it roll down your arm. And you, your other hand gives the ball a slight spin. It spins the ball like this whoop, around. Just a slight spin. And then pretty soon it'll start going all the way around your body to this hand again. And you spin it again. And it just keeps going around and around and around. And pretty soon you don't even hardly need to spin it. It just, it just keeps going by itself. Well, that's around the world without a spinning basketball. Now let's add the spinning basketball to the around the world trick. Just get it spinning, and it may not work this time. I'm just going to show you how it works. And let it roll down your arm again, same as we did when we learned it. That's all I did. 
I let it roll down my arm, and I let it come back. That's all you do. Now, this may take you a long time because you're used to the ball just very slightly spinning. It's going to be going very fast now. So, be ready. You've got it spinning. Just get good at letting it roll around, and that's all you're doing. Okay, the final step of this is actually catching the ball on your hand when it comes back around. So you're going to spin the basketball, let it come around, and come back to your finger again. Now that was a sloppy version, but if you practice and practice, you can get this thing very smooth. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to spin a basketball on pointed objects. And all pointed objects are the same. It doesn't matter on your toothbrush, on your pen to write with, on your razor to shave with. All of them work the same way. All you're doing is you're transferring the ball from your frictionless fingertip to a hopefully very pointed edge that has very little friction either. Okay, step one. Whatever object you're transferring, here's the way I do it. Always, I put it in my mouth and I put it in this way. That way I don't have any chance. Never put it in like this because you might have an accident, obviously. Put it in like this. Now, while it's in there, I'm going to get the ball spinning and you're going to notice I'll take my off hand, I'll pull the object out, I'll spin the object on the basketball and immediately I will transfer this is my off hand. Remember, it's not as coordinated. I'm going to quickly transfer my other hand and take the ball because it's the one that's the most coordinated. So remember that. When you spin the object first, start off with the object, or I'm sorry, the pin in your mouth. Spin the ball. Pull off the pin with your off hand. Put it underneath the object. Transfer it from your fingernail. Then switch to your other hand. Okay, let's demonstrate. It's that simple. And that object will, that ball will spin there a long time on that object if it's pointed and it's if it's um, easily transferred. And if it starts to wobble, you just start it spinning just like it would be on your fingernail. And this is going to take some time. And you don't want to try to do anything like go ahead and brush your teeth or uh, or shave with it or, or anything like that until you've mastered just putting it on an object, a pointed object, and spinning it, getting it to spin there. And once you get good at it, once it spins there perfectly, now you can start doing very slowly. This is a dirty toothbrush. I'm not going to use it, but, but you see the idea. Just a few tips about spinning a ball on a pointed object. Remember, this object, when you transfer it to your hand, imagine it's still on one of your fingers. I'm imagining that it's still like my middle finger, and the coordination is the same. Also, make sure that you hold this pin or whatever the object is very firm very firm grip because if it's loose there's a lot of leeway and the ball is going to ro roll around so hold it very firm also make sure the object some toothbrushes or some pins are not that good for spinning the object needs to be as pointed as possible of all the tricks I do passing a spun ball to a little kid is the most beautiful thing to see is that kid, even if it spins there for three seconds, that kid loves it. They're so proud of themselves. Okay, my first tip on passing a spun ball to an audience member. Find an audience member who has decent fingernails, but you don't want some, um, you don't want some girl that's got fingernails this long, because I have actually had a poor girl break her fingernail one time. I put it on her nail, and it broke, and I felt really bad. So when you pick the person, try to pick someone who has, you know, decent fingernails, but you don't want somebody that's got extremely long ones, especially ones to be worried about breaking them. Now, your instructions to the audience member are the most important thing. You can't just, remember, this person does not know how to spin a basketball. You have to help them do everything. Things that are commonplace to you, they're not thinking. So when you, first of all, a lot of times I like to spin the ball on my thumb. It's my favorite one to spin on. But a little kid or, or you know, an amateur, they're not going to have any kind of coordination in their thumbs. So make sure when you go to spin that basketball thing, now hold your finger up like this. That, may, that puts in their mind the suggestion to use their pointer finger. So I say, put your finger like this if you want to spin it. 
Now, once they've got their finger up there, I go ahead and spin it. It doesn't matter which finger I use now. Now, take their finger and hold on to it. Stiffen it. Make sure they get their finger very stiff. And I, I sometimes even say, make your finger stiff. And then I set the ball on their fingertip, on their fingernail if possible, still holding on to their finger as it spins. Now, if I can feel that they feel fairly stiff, then I may pull my hand away. Or I might say, make it stiff, hold it real tight. And that'll make them stiffen their finger up and it'll balance it just enough to where I can pull my hand away for a few seconds and it'll spin there. And they'll just look at it like, wow. And sometimes I'll reach in and I'll take the ball back, put it on my own finger now and take it back right when I think it's about ready to fall off their hand. The only problem with this is every little kid in a five mile radius will want you to do this trick with them too. So have fun with it. It's my favorite trick. Okay, we're going to move on to the most advanced ball spinning trick on this video, and that's spinning a ball on a circular object. Now, the first thing you need to do is find a circular object that's not glass. I was not wise in this choice. All right, I changed objects to make it a little safer, and maybe I can get a little advertisement money for Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew is very good, by the way. Now, <laughs> I take the ball, I'm going to spin it. Set the object down for a second. Tilt the can, put it on the lid, and you see it will spin there. And if you practice, you can actually open the can and pour yourself a little drink. <laughs> it takes a lot of practice, by the way. All right, well, I guess that's over, and uh, we'll give a good refreshing Mountain Dew.